Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit 2016. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in Santa Clara, California at the AWS Summit Santa Clara. 4,000 people milling around to get the latest and greatest on Amazon and, and even more than AWS, really the ecosystem is really well represented. Terrific keynote by Dr. Matt Wood this morning. It's just really reinforcing the relentless pace of innovation that Amazon just keeps moving the ball down the field. They don't waste a lot of time, they just keep innovating, 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 and they've really changed the game because of that relentless pace of innovation that everybody sees on the retail side at Amazon the store and Amazon the retailer, but really at AWS on the enterprise infrastructure space, it is relentless. Uh, so we're excited to be back here. Uh, Lisa Martin, great to be sitting with you again. Our latest CUBE host, really glad to have her on board. And uh, our next guest, we'll jump into it, Nelson Naham, the co-founder and CEO of Zadar Storage. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you, how are you? Absolutely terrific. Thank, thank you for having me here. Oh, terrific. So why don't you give us an update for uh, the folks that aren't familiar with Zadara. Yeah, Z exactly. So Zadara is a storage as a service company. Uh, we do enterprise class storage uh, with the same capability, reliability, security, performance uh, of what we, you would call a traditional storage but with the business model of as a service, with the agility of multi-tenancy, where every customer has their own dedicated uh, storage box, let's say. Right. Um, and uh, it, it's the pay-per-use, uh, it's connected to Amazon. Any Amazon customer can use our storage, uh, either as a block or file. Uh, as well as we do with other cloud providers, number two and number three, <laughs> and, and also we do on-premise, also as a service. Um, we specialize in storage, we are really good in storage, um, and this is what we do. Excellent, so you've got a great perspective, because one of the big cloud topics is hybrid cloud, right? Yes. Everybody's talking about hybrid, and some people would say it's just the old legacy people trying to keep one foot in, you know, as you move everything to the public. But you see both, you've got customers that have hybrid clouds, you've got customers that are using Zadara as storage on-prem, you've yeah. got people using storage through the Amazon connection. What, what do you see, kind of how workloads are shifting yeah. and points of view within your customer base? Yeah, uh, great question. So, yeah, w we sell uh, storage as a service to enterprises, and enterprises have data centers, they have cloud, they have different clouds, and uh, they are moving many of the workloads to the cloud, but still, uh, I think that the movement is not a uh, completely shift. In some cases, some people are going the opposite direction. Uh, I think that people want to have the flexibility to run whatever they need at the time that they, <laughs> they will need uh, in the best place. Right. Uh, so we have customers that either started on premise and moved to Amazon or, or copy to Amazon or do DR in Amazon, and the opposite as well. We started with Amazon and they say, well, now we have our data centers and we want to be able to move data back and forth. There are many workloads that make sense to do in public cloud, things like require a lot of CPUs at the same time, and things like that uh, make sense to do in, in Amazon. And there are other things that are, are on premise. And again, I think that the movement is that people decide, depend on the project, where to run, and, and having more options is actually better. That's one of the themes that, that we've heard from some of the guests on the show today is flexibility, what really is kind of the phenomenon behind what AWS offers. I wanted to kind of explore the enterprise space with you a little bit. They launched last year the Elastic File System, really a direct target against the incumbent storage vendors which, with whom you compete. Um, they talked a lot about the enterprise today. They've got big enterprise customers, Salesforce for example. Talk to us about what's different with Zadara Storage as a Service in comparison to those traditional incumbent storage vendors. Storage vendor, yeah. yeah. Uh, so one thing that is different is the way that we charge customers is per use. So instead of having the capex to buy the, the storage boxes, um, you just go to the console and provision the storage. It provisions instantaneously. It can be accessed from AWS, can be on premise, can be on other clouds. Um, so this is one difference, it, it still has the reliability performance, 
security uh, data traditional storage, but because it is provisioned instantaneously, we can do this completely as a service. So the customer don't need to deal with buying hardware, they don't need to deal with uh, how to manage the, the storage, how to upgrade the firmware, all these kind of things that belong to the um, previous <laughs> uh, history, uh, they are not longer uh, needed. And, and the customer can focus, instead of uh, managing storage boxes, uh, in their own business. Right, right. So it provides more agility when they need, they provision the storage that they need. And, and if, if you need to expand, you expand instantaneously. If you need to shrink, you shrink. And you, you don't need to have these storage boxes uh, uh, owning and managing. So cost probably being one of the biggest standout business drivers that your customers are facing. And as we kind of talk about the algorithm of innovation that AWS has been exhibiting for a very long time, you know, that's one of the biggest things, easier to adapt, deploy, manage, and lower cost. Yeah, uh, so I tell you my view regarding uh, AWS innovation that is, is fantastic, uh, frankly. And one of the main things that they really do well is the partnership and ecosystem. Uh, we were a really small company five years ago and we pitched our story to AWS. We were only seven people. And they say, well, this, this is cool. Let's, let's uh, work together. Even though we offer storage and they also offer storage. So um, I think that this is what makes AWS a, a great company. They, they are willing to bring partners that are sometimes competitors in certain areas. Uh, we are really good in storage, so we can provide really good storage services for AWS customers is, is good for AWS. At the same time, I think that the storage team of AWS ha having competition is good for, in order for them to continue to innovate. Uh, so I think that this helps with the innovation. It helps us as a company because AWS is moving fast and we need to move faster. And, and you know, it's, uh, they move fast because of us and we move fast because of them. And it, it is a different dynamic that used to be your, the more traditional enterprise story that as you know, it was very monolithic and right. conservative. Right. Uh, yeah, the whole concept of the elasticity is, is, is fascinating and really it's one of the fundamental tenets of cloud beyond just the, the price and economics, but to be able to elastic, and as you said, elastic means getting bigger as well as getting smaller depending on what the workload is. I think agility is the main, the main thing, right. more than the pricing and so on. The agility means that people today in this global economy, they don't have rigid needs, they, they don't know is the Brexit will be good or will be bad. So right. uh, uh, having the opportunity to say, okay, if I need something, I go to a console and provision, and if I don't need any more because of recession or whatever, I can decommission, it, it's, it's huge for companies. And then people need to do these calculations as opposed to, okay, it, it will take me a lot of CapEx and few weeks to get things installed, and if I don't need much, I stuck with whatever I have. So right. I think that the agility and the capability to extend and shrink depend on the success uh, is, is key for companies. I want to follow up on the other concept that you talked about, which is Amazon as a, as a partner. Um, because clearly seven people feels like a pretty high risk move to jump in bed with these guys that yes. have a ton yeah. of engineering resources, and, and, a ton uh, of capital. Only, yeah, and, and refer to us some of the customers. Right, right. Yeah. So. But how did it impact your business in terms of your go-to-market? Because if it works, suddenly you're part of their marketplace, your exposure to um, a huge customer base, but, but then too, it's different, right? It's, it's click buying, it's not belly-to-belly -belly sales, it's not a traditional way to go to market that you've got to kind of fit in. How did that work, and then how do you jive that with your traditional go-to-market and your traditional yeah. kind of non-Amazon uh, customers? So I, I think that this, uh, for us was a, a blessing, I will say, because the, the fact that we, we are present in a marketplace, uh, anybody of Amazon can go to the AWS marketplace and with one click provision our storage and sell enterprise storage with one click, it, it is uh, pretty fascinating <laughs> compared to the nine months or one year right, sales right. cycle of storage boxes. Um, it, it also, help us as a company, as I said, with the innovation rate, 
with the way that we see things, the way that we sell, the way that we marketing. We, we are, I think that today, a startup not only need to have a really good product and innovation in the product, but we need to be innovative on, on marketing, we need to be innovative on how we sell. Sell is no longer, I, I sell to you and you buy from me, it's more of a partnership. Right. Uh, and competition is also partnership. So it, it, people need to be all the time thinking about, okay, how, how I need to work with you so it's mutual benefit for, for both of us. Right. So we've talked about enterprises in terms of your business model. We talked about what Amazon was, was talking about, what they've announced before. Talk to us about some of your customers outside the enterprise, maybe in the startup space. We know there's a big um, pool of low-hanging fruit there on the Amazon side. Do you play in that space as well with, with AWS? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically we offer storage and block storage, file storage uh, as a service. And storage is a very horizontal type of field. Uh, startups need storage, enterprises need storage. Um, so we, we do have uh, customers that are small startup just starting, and we do have uh, customers that are really big, Fortune 50 customers that are using our storage as well. So again, the, the, the premise is that um, we provide a very highly configurable storage with performance, security, and, and data protection features comparable to enterprise storage array, but provision from a console in a minute and pay for what you use. And, and obviously for startups, it's good. I mean, the, the, the whole as a service for startups is, is really good. Uh, we, as a company ourselves, we use the cloud for ourselves. We started in the cloud from day one. We, we don't have a, a IT department. Uh, you know, on premise. So that's a great story. We like Zadara, but, but let's jump to it. How do the customer, what do the customers do with this flexibility? What do you see in the customer behavior that they can do now, your customers, that they just couldn't do before, yeah. having this flexibility on this drive? Yeah. You know, so, how, how do they really take advantage of, yeah, of what you're offering? Definitely, so uh, a good example, we have a, a, a university that, uh, in, it started with us. Uh, I think they started back in December, uh, December 2015, uh, like six months ago, seven months ago. And we provision. This is in this case is on premise, and and they actually start looking to do cloud as well. Uh, so we provisioned the first hardware they they did for a particular project. They said, oh, we need to connect VMware and this and that. And since then, every week or every two weeks. They provision more storage for different applications. Some are traditional applications like Exchange and VMware and, and things like that, that they still want to see the traditional storage. The iSCSI, Block, Fiber Channel, NFS, SIFs, uh, this kind of thing. And, and some are new applications that are more of the object storage and connected to AWS and, and so on. So uh, our vision is that we are providing storage for different kind of application. We do really well the separation of workloads between customers and between even the workloads of the same customer. So a customer can have a flash only low latency fiber channel block for the super high performance storage and at the same time on the same cloud can have a, another customer or the same customer a workload that is more of a, a file oriented, uh, you know, large capacity, low cost per gigabyte, and so on. So the, what they like is the capability to go to the console and provision and have one minute later the, the storage ready to go, rather than I need to call this vendor for, for NAS, I need to call like, this vendor for Flash, I need to call this vendor for Block. That's great. And two, kind of the traditional storage paradigm was you were always over overextended, right? You always had to buy more than you needed because you had to get it in yes. chunks and it took forever, so your, your efficiency you know, was, was significantly the, less than you can do now kind of on demand. Yeah, the, the, the user experience, whether it's in the, in the public cloud or private cloud, uh, is, is exactly the same. You go to the console, provision is, is ready to go. We manage the system for the customers, we monitor the system for the customers, uh, when they reach a certain level of utilization, 
we call the customer and say, hey, we are going to ship you a couple of boxes for free. You don't need to do anything. All what you need to do is to connect the boxes into the, the rack, and we do the, you know, all the remote DevOps and so on. Um, and there are always storage ready to go for next time that you need provision storage. So what's next? What's, what are you looking at? What's coming up down the road? What are you guys focused on? Yeah, uh, so we, we do, um, first of all, as I said, we, we are trying to extend more and more workloads. Uh, storage need to be configured specific for every need, and, and this is our expertise, right? Uh, as opposed to having a vanilla type of storage, only one, uh, we can provision storage for low latency, block, file, enterprise file, SIFs, NFS, uh, objects, fiber channel, and so on. Uh, so we are looking to add more services, more storage okay. services. Uh, we are looking to, we are developing um, capabilities to uh, better do the hybrid cloud. Uh, today we do very easily remote replication for disaster recovery and movement, but there are things that can be improved and the, the main idea is that customer, whether the, the storage is in the public cloud or it is on premise or it is in a different cloud, they will have a single console that can manage all the storage and easily move things uh, back and forth. And, and are you going to butt heads with some of the Amazon products in doing that? Or are there some places like, I'm just picking one, Glacier, where you, know, you don't want to play in that space and you know, potentially stuff would be migrated? How do you kind of work with the, the Amazon offerings or you just compete? Head-to-head, -head, uh, or we, how does that kind of work? Okay, we, uh, in general, the philosophy is that uh, we offer storage. Uh, we try to get a higher level of uh, capabilities than, than Amazon. Um, uh, so we understand that if somebody can do in Amazon with Amazon product, not likely to come to Zara. Right, right. You got to have value add, right? Yeah. So, so we are playing the value add. Okay. And uh, we do a lot of things that Amazon don't do. Uh, but again, uh, if this is storage, so at the end of the day, we do compete in some of the with some of their products. Uh, some of the customer can do with Amazon. Some other cannot do. We again, we provide higher level functionality. A, a good example is. The, just the release the EFS finally. Um, we do we do NAS as well, and they do NAS. But ours, for example, is, is integrated with Active Directory. It has snapshot, geo replication, and things like you will find more of an enterprise NAS type right, of capability. Right. Uh, and there's done. So some people will use this, some people will use that, and I think Amazon is aware of that, and it's good for Amazon because sure. at the end of the day. The customer is happy, and even if they use us, they still use the compute of Amazon, the networking, and, and all the other 150 more products. So you're, you're dancing that, that line of complementary versus competition very well, and, and really, out of that, have a very symbiotic relationship. Their innovation drives your innovation. Yes, and, and I think that Amazon is doing the same. So Amazon is well known by, for being a really good partner by competing with the partner, sometimes hiding from the partners. Right, right. Uh, so it, it is an interesting game, I would say, and, and we, we enjoy playing. All right, so I give you the, I give you the last word. So Andy Jassy is a big fan of the Cube. He's been on the Cube. Uh, I think he was on when you were on at, at reInvent. If you're talking to Andy Jassy as a representative of the ecosystem, what one or two things would you say, Andy, things are great, but could you please do? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so we, uh, one of the things that we, uh, and again, with Amazon, we have a special relationship because we do things a little bit different, so they changed their Direct Connect uh, in order to accomplish us. Uh, we are now in the Amazon Marketplace as a special exception that they did for us, and, and they are really good at, at us. Uh, so, so yeah, the, we would like more of the Amazon Marketplace to be, you know, to have a more marketing around, easy to find. Uh, if we could be the Amazon console, uh, would be great. 
Very good. It's Andy, just like, please. <laughs> Andy, you, you heard it, Andy. Give uh, give Nelson some love. You know, get him up to the top of the select. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like exactly. the Apple store, right? Uh, exactly. There's a thousand applications. How am I supposed yeah. to find my favorite one? Yeah. All right, yeah. Nelson, well, thank you uh, for stopping by, giving us a bizarre update, and uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. That's, you, you, uh, Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick. She's Lisa Martin. You're watching The Cube, and we're at AWS Summit Santa Clara. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching. Thank you.